fulcrum of our society that people are joined to barely get by. People just livelihood. And one of the reasons people are because poverty is linked to leadership. So when we talk about bad leadership, it's not just about the fruit, the root. But Miguel says the centuries have told us, as we have seen of dictators, as we have known that an elite is to rule. In other words, the development and the growth of nation is a level of literacy and the awareness of their people. And literacy nation, as one of our work at Subeb is to promote literacy and no and that's why we have the EGRA and the EGMA. So in other mobility, it's not just to be in the classroom to teach, no. We are midwife. We say but we prepare the future because as Kato school in ensuring that the next generation of citizens in the nation of the community where we educate are literate and empowered and informed enough to be able to make the right decision. An illiterate citizenship result to bad governance, use the norm, and illiterate citizenship would pour their waste into the gutter and block drainage because they lack the wisdom to understand that their action has an effect on society, on their communities, and on their environment. And so our educators to commend and congratulate is critical and pivotal to the development of our communities and our nation at large. And well, we are gathered tonight to court that the educators have played. Intervention, the, the COVID disruption in me here have continued to advance learning virtually. You have continued to ensure that our children are learning something and their mind is being moved all the time. It is important that we understand that the role of as, as school managers and school leaders is so important that there is no community that can survive without the role that you play. And it is on to us to now stand on the guard the abilities of children. The best gift a parent can give to a child is education. It is the best asset a child can have. No matter, no matter what their gifts are, education helps them to optimize those talents and their it helps them to think cognitive and their affective is better enhanced with a level of education. And that is what we do at Super and Basic Education. Important, Mr. Governor, that if we can get it right at the basic education level and help children to learn at the basic level, they can get their basic numeracy right, it will be easy for them to donate. I'm an organizer in my area. The more I was prompt, but guess who can write? It can read, it can give you, you may not be able to do a algebra or algorithm or to a data, but the basic knowledge of charging you money, pricing, reading, and writing, he has it because he, and so as individuals, we are midwives, we are protectors of destiny, 
and we have a role to play, not just in the classroom, the nation decide themselves. So, so that I want to personally, behind the Yoruba will say there's someone that is behind the masquerade that, that makes the noise. The masquerade is not a spirit. Where am I driving at? I'm driving at the fact that as educators, while we know that we have a duty to the children and to the pupils that we're delivering the future, we must remember that we are guardians of destiny. Let me tell you a story. When I was in secondary school, I had a vice principal, Reverend Adetukobo Jayesimi, was my pre vice principal at Methodist Boys High School. I, I remember would give me missionary books. He would give me materials to read. He would speak to me. And every day that I came across Reverend, the way to schools in scenario in Victoria Island, Zenith Bank. If he meets you on the way, it gives you a verse for the day. And so my birthday was 20, it's 29th of January. And on that, if he meets you on the June, he will give you, they can say, today is the 3rd of June, which is three of they can say today is so John 3 6. And it will quote exactly what verse is in John 3 6. So it met me on the road one day in my school uniform. I said, Today is the 29th of I'm giving you a quote. The quote for today is uh, Jeremiah says, Have you seen a man diligent in his works? It will stand before kings and not mean men. He said, Dio, diligent. Now was my vice principal, my death chair, my second parent. I spent more time with in school than I spent at home with my parent. He said to me, have you seen a man diligent in his works? He will stand before kings and not mean men. He said, Dio, be diligent. I will never forget that encounter in my life under the tree in front of our school gate and that word stuck with me and guess what? it became a watchword for my life and i began to live by it i began to follow it i began to obey i began to model my life diligent and long before that and i began to see the fruit at 16 years old i was invited to represent nigeria at the united nations I sat down with over 70 presidents at the United Nations headquarters. I was live on CNN at the age of six. Video is on YouTube. If you Google Dio Israel, CNN on YouTube. I was selected out of 300 young people to represent children of the world live in the United States. I met Nelson Mandela. From there, I was invited to other global events because of genius. By 21, the Queen of England had personally invited Buckingham Palace because of diligence. If you go on Google and put Dial Israel, you see my picture of a couple of pictures with Her Majesty the Queen because I've had the privilege of interacting with her over different in my growing up. What I'm trying to say, it was an inspiration from the pool that God put in my life. The caters, my team helped me in my formative life. And so as educators, we have a role to play. It is our duty to help the pupils in our classes or in our schools and in our institutions to understand the king and the prince in them. It is responsibility and this queen inside of them. Every child is born with a seed and with a gift and with a talent. But it is the people that they come in contact with life that will help them become an Obama or an Osama. So it's up to you to choose to be an Obama to them or an Osama to them. It is the people that they come in contact with that will help them to shape their thoughts. Some young people, their dreams and their character come in contact with editors, and teachers, and instructors who told them, oh, Lord, don't hear you, you cannot pass anything. You will live more when your head is a doll. And they have carried that all their life thinking that they can never amount to something. And was last year, we're at a hotel for a retreat, and a friend or one of my colleagues on the board had a guest. As soon as the guest came in, she saw 
one of the teachers that had come for that retreat and said, that man, know him very well, he's a very good person. He told me when I was young that I was never going to amount to anything. Today, the girl works in one of the old countries, was Ohando in Victoria Highland, but she never forgot the statement from that teacher that she met over 20 years later last year. This was a real life scenario. We have a duty. Let me wrap up with this story from the scripture. I'm a Christian, so allow me to shoot you from the scripture. In Gloria, a guy was running with uh, Ishmael, and she was tired and was frustrated and was depressed. And the baby was crying and a bit irritated. So he sat down and put the baby under a tree and went further from there to sit down somewhere else. And when she got down there, suddenly an angel appeared onto her and said, Hi, Ishmael, hey guy, what are you doing here? He said, I'm so tired, I'm depressed. There's been coronavirus, they don't have food at home, they don't have money, they're tired, the parents are fighting, you know, there's just so much burden. And the angel, Look, a guy. I would say I was like a teacher at that period and said, Arise, take up this youth, take up this girl, take up this pupil, and help him, for I intend to make of him a great nation. In other words, in that little baby that was going through so much challenge, that was crying and weeping, going through domestic violence and broken home, is a great nation. But a guy did not see that at that period. But the moment she saw that that child had the great nation, suddenly a well of water appeared on her side. And the angel says, see, there is water. We are like Agai. We have a duty and a responsibility to help the pupils in our classrooms or that come in contact with us or who are part of our schools or go through our training program to know that there's greatness inside of them. And it is that capacity. We must not be like the brother of David when he said, I'm going to deal with Goliath. And he said, you, you think so much of yourself. I remember when I was in England, I was traveling a lot, doing events, attending conferences and meetings. And one of my pastors said to me, oh, you have go. I just came back from my brother and said, where did you travel again this time? Always going around the world like an endless chain. I never forget that statement. Don't hold it against him. I thank God for where I am today, way better than where they thought I was going to be. But the reality was, it was so shallow, he never saw beyond the present. We must never be like that. We must know that we're midwives of destiny. We must know that we have a responsibility to deliver the future to help our pupils birth their destiny and their dream. And the only way we can also do that is to be fulfilled in ourselves. We need to invest in ourselves. We need to build our own capacity. We need to be happy. Happiness is important. When you're not happy, it is hard for you to be able to make other people happy. You can't give what you don't have. It's not possible. So no matter what we go through in life, we must understand that our lives are in the hands of a supreme being, and we must find happiness in whatever we do. We must have strength. We must be courageous. We don't want to go to the classroom with depression. It relates in the way that we deal with the children. When you have an unhappy leadership, you will have an unhappy environment. The product of your pupils are going to be unhappy. But it is important that you find joy. No matter what may be around you, never internalize the depression, the sorrows, the fuel scarcity, the fact that fuel price is going up by like a, a, another 10, 15 naira. Never let that steal away your happiness. Let me close with a story. There was this little man. He went to an abolition. And I said, Abelis, I want to know what the future holds for me. And the Abelis took a chalk and he said, Irukere falo wa. And he drew a circle on the left. He drew a circle on the right. The circle of the left was with a black chalk. The circle on the right was with a white chalk. And then he put a lukewarm in the middle of the two circles and said, Young man, I'm going to tell you your destiny, but you are going to tell it from this thing. If this, oh, Warm moves to this black sector is 
remove the word home, it means the first great. So the one started moving, 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 moving towards the white one, gently, slowly, gradually. Just when he got to the tip to enter the white one, he turned back and began to move to the black one. As he was going, the young man looked at him and kept saying, hmm. He kept sighing and kept saying, hmm. And when he was about to enter the black one, the young man picked up the worm and threw it in the middle of the black white circle. The elderly said, stop that. You don't touch it. He said, old man, I will never open my eyes and see my future being destroyed I sight and I do not know it. I will never Lajumisile Kita Lubokokowo. In other words, we as educators must never sit back and let the future of our pupils and our children be destroyed. We must and do about it. So that we go out of our way to teach, to impart knowledge, to inspire, build the next generation of change makers, of leaders, grace of the Almighty. Thank you so much for the opportunity and God bless you. Thank you very much. Can we please um, put our hands together, if you can, in the chat room. Um, say thank you, raise, you know, do thumbs up, right? for that powerful inspirational address. You know, it's beyond the keynote address. Thank you very much, Honorable Israel. Um, I can imagine what you thank gave you. up to be with us this afternoon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You said some very powerful, um, made some very powerful statements, um, but I pick out the diligence aspect of it. It's, it's a whole lot, it's a loaded statement, diligence, is something that we must never trade for anything. So a lot of us are looking at you, sir. Um, a lot of us are being challenged by how um, you're being, you're going about your duties, how the things that you do. Uh, and I pray that you will continue to be a role model to millions of other people out there. We would like to say on behalf of the board um, of Bumiade Dayo Foundation, myself, my colleagues, and our dear participants, we would like to thank you for your time, sir. We cannot pay for it. We are quite motivated, and I know a lot of people are already making comments. God bless you. God bless you real good. You are indeed the Lion King, and may your reign be long, sir. Mm? Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for your kind words in the, in the, in the meeting room. Um, I can see all the, all the great things that you've said about the Lion King, Honorable Dayo Israel. Um, yes, and I hope you remember all that you have said. Every child is born with a seed, and um, you as the educator, what role are you playing? So um, are you killing that seed or are you making the seed grow? Right? Are you enhancing the, the, the seed or are you stifling life out of um, the seed? Are you an Obama to your children, to your, to, your, to your learners that is bringing out the best and inspiring them? Or are you an Osama, right? Um, figuratively, um, killing the dreams of these children. Um, another one that I cannot miss is uh, educators and parents are midwives of destiny, right? Uh, are you birthing the destiny of that learner in your class, or are you killing the destiny of that learner? Are your words building your, your, your learner's future, or are your words killing or destroying their future? Are the things you say or do removing them from the realm of self-confidence, right? Or are you moving them forward into an I can do it uh, moment? So it's a, a lot of word for thoughts, you know, for us as educators. And I want you all to please take a moment um, after this session to look to, 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 to reflect on what has been said. This video is going to be available on YouTube. We're currently live streaming on YouTube. So you can also take a moment to go there to watch um, this video again. All right, so moving on.
like I said earlier on today, um, I am not hosting you alone. So today I'm hosting you um, with my colleague, um, Ovigwe, Ovigwe Akodikere. Ovigwe is our, our program officer in charge of monitoring and evaluation. So she's going to join us right after now to introduce the next um, speaker and she's going to be your anchor um, till the end of the session. Um, Ovigwe, um, I'd like to leave the floor for you. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to have you here again. So outside of keynote speaker who has spoken, who has given us a very awesome charge this afternoon, I'll, it's my pleasure to bring to you no other person but Mr. Akin Alamu. He's going to take us through the topic, reflection as a critical skill, tools and strategy for teachers. So this is just a brief introduction of Mr. Alamu. Mr. Aki Alamu is an author, conference speaker, training content developer, and education sector development and management specialist with multi-sectoral multi experience spanning school planting and management, curriculum development and evaluation, teacher engagement development, resources, development and education marketing. He has a background in education and communication arts from the University of Ibadan, Nigeria. During his teaching career that spanned over two decades, he successfully taught the British, Nigerian and international baccalaureate curricula to students of diverse backgrounds and orientation. He has also worked as education partnerships manager at the British Council. Mr. Aki is currently the CEO, Ed Consultant at Iran Curriculum, an education training development and management company. Mr. Akin focuses on empowering teachers, students, and schools with time-relevant skills and competences. Akin is a published author of five books on education practice and skills development, including Citizenship Education for Global Awareness and 21st Century Teaching. Teacher's Manual. So it's my pleasure to bring to you our great facilitator this afternoon. So Mr. Aki Alamu, you have the floor, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to be here today on this wonderful platform facilitated by Bumi Adedayo Foundation. Uh, Bumi Adedayo Foundation is a shining light in teacher empowerment and other support in Nigeria, and we are very uh, pleased and honored to be associated with them. Um, my colleagues have worked with you, maybe this is your first time anyway, um, over the last uh, six weeks or thereabout. And I think uh, I participate, participated personally, and I think uh, they've done very great work on different topics. Today, I'm going to uh, be taking you through a topic entitled um, Reflection as a Critical Skill, Tools and Strategies for Teachers. But before we start, I need to say to you that although we are not seen in person, um, I'm going to make it as interactive as possible 
and I want you to engage me through the chat box. I'll be asking questions, and I want you to uh, respond to the questions that I'll be asking. Um, it's going to be around 30 minutes, and this 30 minutes is going to worth your time. Thank you. If you are ready, I'm ready. Um, uh, Bill Gates, arguably one of the richest uh, people on the surface of the earth, some 25 years ago bought a journal, Leonardo da Vinci's journal. He bought it for over $30 million. Not Naira, even if it, buy a journal for 30 million Naira is still a lot, a lot of money. Just a notebook, $30 million. Leonardo da Vinci was um, an Italian polymath. When we say somebody is a polymath, we mean that this person is deeply knowledgeable and diversely talented. Leonardo da Vinci had one habit of recording experiences in uh, notebooks and um, whatever he was thinking about doing, he documented. He was into architecture, mathematics, botany, science, as a matter of fact, the inventions of adding machine and, um, um, and um, helicopter have been attributed to Leonardo da Vinci, who was really, really vast. So he kept a journal over 500 years ago, and Bill Gates bought this journal for over $30 million. I put it to you, ladies and gentlemen. Why do you think Bill Gates, whom we all know that is not frivolous with spending, would buy a notebook for $30 million. I want you to engage me. Yes, why? Why do you think Leonardo da Vinci bought this, I mean, uh, Bill Gates bought this journal for $30 the, uh, I would think that the reason why he bought this journal for this much would be that he want to have access to the thinking process of this great man called Leonardo da Vinci. He wanted to see what kind of thinking will produce this enormous work, including painting of Mona Lisa and the Lord's Supper. So today, <clears throat> the objectives of this session are these. We want to learn why reflection skill is important for everyone, especially time relevant educator. We want to learn how reflection can become a more prominent aspect of an educator's practice. And of course, we want to consider some reflective questions. I want to share with you some questions that I've been um, reflecting on since 2008 and what the outcomes are of those questions. So if you ask me um, what, and uh, we as educators, what we should reflect on, I'll be very quick to conclude that there are almost innumerable things to reflect on as educators in 21st century. Um, I will always be very, uh, also be very quick to, to add that this kind of reflection that we are talking about is not, is that you are not being inundated with thinking. You are systematically engaging your thinking process and you are documenting it as you are thinking. So um, John Dewey, one of the early thinkers in education practice, once said that we do not learn from experience. We learn 
uh, from uh, reflecting uh, on experience. I say that again, we don't learn uh, from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. So if Dewey was right, and I think in my humble opinion, I think he was, that would mean that we could be recycling mistakes for 20 years, and we say we have experience. It is actually the interrogation, the iteration, the thinking process that you inject into your experience that will determine if you are improving yourself. That's self-evaluation. And if you want to operate very well, you don't want to operate as a robot in 21st century, this is something that you have to take very seriously. You are not a robot, you are a creative being and your power is actually in that creativity. If you want to just uh, do things, you are interested in only routines, then the process of reflection we elude you and you are not going to develop as you're supposed to develop as an educator. Now, it is this John Dewey again who said that if we teach today's students as yesterday, we rob them of tomorrow. Obviously, things can be the same because things are changing. Even in the last six months since the outbreak of coronavirus, we have seen that a lot have changed, even the way in the way that we educate um, our students. And if we say that we want to um, educate today's students as we were properly educated some even five years ago, you are not going to be time relevant. So you are going to bring in the skill of reflection and begin to um, reflect very deeply. I want you to quickly uh, uh, respond to the uh, poll that is given you on the screen. And when you have done that, you, um, you submit and then you, you move on. So he said that we, uh, if we teach today's children as we teach, as we uh, taught yesterday, then we are going to deny them the opportunity of being time relevant. So now what's reflection? Simply it means um, you being conscious and bringing intense awareness to what you do. And the outcome of this very cognitive process is that you are going to become wise. You are going to gain insight and um, your strategies will change and you are going to be able to make impact on the surface of the earth. So reflection is you bringing deep awareness and deep um, consciousness on an issue, on an event, with the aim of probably doing things differently or improving on the process. Now, I ask you, who is a reflective educator? For me, I think um, a reflective educator is the honest educator. One that is not afraid to say that I don't know. We say that um, information has been democratized in 21st century. As an educator, as a teacher, you don't know everything. The students that you teach have access to vast information, maybe those that you have not come across. And when you are teaching and the child asks a question that is going to probably challenge you, you are not covering up. You say to the child, I don't know, I will find out. That's reflection. You think deeply about what you want to teach, how you want to teach it. And before you go to the class, you settle it within yourself 
how will I know that the students that I'm teaching have understood what I teach? And this re reflection that we are talking about, not only for educators, but anyone that wants to progress, you have to do it. Research has proved that people who reflect regularly on their activities, on how they do things, and on what they do, they progress at much faster rates than people that are working like robots that are not bringing interrogation into what they do. So you record life experiences in your journal. Why did I do this? How did I do it? And that becomes your um, opportunity to develop. Let's move on. So if you are like me, what would be um, on your mind should be now we as educators, how can we use this skill of reflection? How can it become a more prominent aspect of our practice as educators? And I want to suggest three areas to you. Number one, peer observation. You are not waiting for your supervisor, you are not waiting for your principal or head teacher to come and see you teach. You have an agreement with your colleague and your colleague comes to see you as you teach. And what, that, what, what will happen after that teaching is that two of you will sit down and you see, how did you go? And your colleague will ask you, if you are going to teach this lesson again, how are you going to do it differently? That is putting reflection into practice as an educator. Another one, which is journaling. I'm going to talk more about this journaling very shortly. Documenting your processes. Get a notebook and you write it down, what you think about how you are doing things and how you can improve on it. Then the last one is collaborative planning. When I was teaching international baccalaureate, I practiced this a lot. We would come together as colleagues, even people that are not in your department, they come to inject ideas into how you can teach what you are teaching. And at the end of the day, what you are teaching will now be very, very robust and it's going to be very deep. So these are the three areas which I think we uh, can bring reflection very quickly into our processes as educators. As I said, I'm going to be talking more on uh, journaling. So um, this journaling as educators, you can use a notebook, you can do it through um, electronic uh, documents, maybe your computer or your smartphone. Of course, you can record verbally, you can pick your phone and record your uh, reflections. This is what I did and this is how I did it. And I think uh, we, can, we can do more about it. And I said to you that your lesson note is a very table tool that you can use as educator. The evaluation aspect of the uh, lesson plan, which we usually want to use for, uh, for student assessment, is actually for your own assessment as well. So in your lesson plan, you document how the lesson um, progressed and what you could do differently if you are going to teach the same lesson again. What are the learnings that you have uh, uh, attained teaching that particular, particular lesson? So a poll is, uh, is up now, and I think uh, you're already responding to it. So um, <clears throat> this journal is very important, and we are going to uh, see more. That's why uh, Bill Gates would uh, by someone who passed on some 500 years ago, we buy it for over $30 million. So your learning journal is very personal to you and it's going to reflect your personality, it's going to reflect your preferences and experiences. It's not that you are just documenting what other people have done or the solutions which we, they have um, brought up. You are bringing your own solutions thinking even about their own solutions. 
And the purpose of this is to enhance your learning through self-evaluation. You are writing it. As you are writing, you are thinking about it. And your experiences will be wider and even very, very deep as a practitioner. Now, um, journaling. Why is journaling very important? You will understand and appreciate the importance of self-evaluation. It's not enough for you to be told how you performed an activity. It is very important if you yourself will do self-evaluation on how you did it and the outcomes that you attained. So you will gain clearer overview of your learning progress. I started from here. This is where I am now, and this is where I want to go to. That's exactly what your learning journal will do for you. So you gain insights in your own strengths and weaknesses, how you can work more on your strengths and how you can eliminate your weaknesses. And of course, you will become capable of taking action, actions that will make you to overcome life difficulties and to make you to become more capable at what you do. And I need to say quickly that your learning journal must not be purely descriptive of your activities. It's not a diary. Diaries are good, but your learning journal is more than a diary where you just record what you have done, maybe in a particular day or in a week. Your learning journal is going to be showing how you did it and why you perform an action. So that's how it's different from a journal. Don't make it purely descriptive. Make it very reflective. And that's why your lesson notes, the lesson plan, that document is very important. It's very handy for you and you can really quickly document what you, what you are doing as a teacher or even outside the class. I said to you that I'm going to share with you um, my story. And the good thing about this is that some people are already paying for this. Um, it's not like uh, Leonardo da Vinci that uh, maybe somebody now paid for his journal uh, after he had passed on. People are now uh, asking me to come and share my experiences on what I've been thinking about. And I want to quickly share, share them with you. Um, number one question that I've been thinking about and I've been finding solutions to is this. What is the profile of today's child? Um, do we want to engage the 21st century learner as we engage uh, students of last century? What's the attention span of today's learner? I've been finding answers to it and I've been documenting and I've been sharing and people are paying for it. Number two, what kind of environment, in what kind of environment should, I can see that um, some people are raising their hands and um, so it's very, um, you, you can write your questions and after this uh, presentation, I think uh, uh, we have the opportunity to to respond to your, to your questions. Please document your questions. My colleagues will document them and I will be able to respond to your, to your questions. Let me quickly go through this, um, this, um, uh, my questions, which I've been documenting since 2008. So question number two is this, that I've been thinking about. Um, in what kind of environment should today's child be learning? Will child still learn if uh, <clears throat> we don't um, put them in uh, air-conditioned environment. That's physical environment. What about the emotional and psychological environment which I am in charge of as a teacher? How can I make it very conducive to learning for the child? Question number three, <clears throat> what learning resources should we use to support us as we teach? Do we need to import um, resources from Canada or from China before we can um, educate today's child? What environmental and neighborhood resources do we have that we can use to support teaching? I've been documenting all this 
my reflections. Now, number four, number five, I think, is it number five? What collaboration should happen between the, the, the home and the school as we progress? Do I need to get the cooperation of the parents before I can be successful as a teacher in 21st century, finding answers to all this? Now, how can we, that's another question, I think that should be question six. How can we manage the behavior of the child today? Do we still want to continue to do proper punishment, beating them before they can behave well and finding answers to that? What should constitute the content of the curriculum? I mean the knowledge, I mean the skills and the attitude that should be there. And how do we, that's another question anyway, that should be question number seven. How do we, maybe eight, I've lost count anyway. How do we uh, teach this content? That's methodology. Do I want to come to the class and tell the child all the information? Or do I want to facilitate learning and get input from the children that I'm teaching? And of course, how do we access this um, content that we are teaching? Do I want to rely solely on paper and pencil uh, test for me to know what the child is learning or there are other assessment strategies that can support me to teach today's child? And of course, the last uh, question that I've been finding answers to, if you have met me before or you have seen the work that I've done, you will know that I've worked a lot on the forces of the century. And my question is this, how can we embed the forces of the century into our teaching and learning process? By forces of the century, I mean communication, I mean collaboration, I mean creativity and critical thinking. How can I, as a teacher, even if I'm teaching geography, English, Yoruba language, whatever subject I'm teaching, how can I embed these competencies into the processes of, uh, of teaching that I'm doing? So these are my question, questions that I've been thinking about in the last uh, uh, 12 years. I know you have your own questions too, maybe not as many as mine. Write your questions and let's see what you've been reflecting on or what you plan to reflect on as we progress as educators. That's a poll up here. And um, I want you to quickly respond to this and, and we move on. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to conclude my presentation um, by quoting Confucius. Confucius said that we can only attain wisdom through three means. By three means can we attain wisdom. Reflection, imitation, and experience. According to Confucius, Confucius was a Chinese uh, philosopher. He said that experience is the <clears throat> most painful of these three. Imitation is the easiest. And I put it to you, who wants to pay for something that's so easy? I'm not saying that we should make things to be difficult. But if you are meeting, imitating people, then you are not bringing reflection into the process. And I tell you, you may not be able to do wonders in 21st century. And the last one, um, I mean, reflection, he said is the noblest that if you really want to attain wisdom and you want your process to be noble, you want it to uh, appeal to members of human race and you want to solve problems, you want to help people, you want to help yourself, you are going to do more of reflection than learning from imitation, than learning from experience. Of course, we can't run from experience in life, but when you bring in reflection into your experience, then it becomes expanded and you learn from it and you do things differently. Thank you very much um, everyone for your time. Um, I've really um, enjoyed myself and I think uh, you have to. I want to uh, sincerely appreciate Bumi Adedayo Foundation again for giving us this opportunity to meet and I hope um, we are going to have the opportunity to meet 
uh, in future as well. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lamu. Thank you, thank you for this awesome presentation. Okay, so right away we'll be appreciated. I, I want to see your reactions towards this um, towards this session. So just quickly type in your your reaction, how you feel about this presentation, what you've learned. I, I would like to see your comments on the comment session. So let's give before as we drop our comments, let's also appreciate Mr. Alamul. At least give him a hand of applause. Though you can see you just use your emoji to give him some wonderful reactions. Thank you, thank you. Tell him thank you. Thank you for the awesome time. Thank you. And the, the great blessing. information he has shared with us. So right away, you can drop your questions also on the comment session. We don't want to spend too much time. We don't want to exceed our normal time. So drop your comments on the comment, your questions session. At the end of the second uh, speaker, we'll take all questions together. Mr. Alamu will still be available to answer your questions. Is that correct, sir? Yes, please. Thank you. So just type in your questions and we'll pick it up from there. So right away, I'll be sharing. Let me quickly share my screen. So bring on board our second speaker. Hello, can you see my screen, please? All right, so our second speaker will be talking on engaging scaffolds that deepens independent learning. Now, who is going to take it, who is going to be taking us on this session is no other person but Mrs. Olubumi Adewako. So Mrs. Olubumi, Olubumi Adewaku is a shattered teacher, an early childhood specialist, a certified educational administrator, a Montessori educator, and a Montessori educator. She consults for schools and trains teachers under the auspices of 14 Impression Company. She has worked with several nursery, primary, and secondary schools to develop the capacity of their teachers. She facilitates on different platforms as a faculty member and a volunteer. Her passion is to better the teaching climb by engaging in training and mentoring of teachers so that the children can have better learning outcomes. So this is just a brief summary of Mrs. Adewaku. So right now I'll stop sharing my screen and she'll take over from this session. Let's welcome Mrs. Adewaku to it. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Ma. Welcome. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, educators. Can you all hear me? OK. We can all hear right. you, Ma, very clearly. OK, thank you very much. Good afternoon once again. Um, it's been an awesome time. Beautiful session there by Mr. Aki Alamo. I've learned um, quite a lot of things from that. You know, the essence of reflection. Educators, we need to do reflections and we'll keep a journal where we update uh, where we have a daily update in order to help us in our teaching uh, career. All right, so um, it's been awesome. It's been wonderful. This is season six of uh, our seven week webinar series. Bumia Dida Foundation has been doing an awesome, awesome um, work in here. And uh, the, the idea, the whole idea behind is to help teachers, you know, to help secure uh, the future of teaching and learning in Nigeria. All right, um, this afternoon, this afternoon I'm going to be talking about engaging scaffolds that deepen learning in children, independent learning, engaging scaffolds that deepen independent learning in children. Now I'll, I'll start right away by, by sharing my screen. Okay, I'm trying to share my screen. Okay, while that is coming up, I'll continue. Uh, the key words there that we're looking at this afternoon, are uh, the word engage, the word scaffold, and the word independent. 
I'm waiting for my screen to come up so that we can have a look at it. I think um, the network now. Okay, let me continue. My my screen is not it's not responding. My screen is not responding. I don't know. Can you see it? Can you see my screen? I'm trying to share the screen. Can you see it? Can you see my slide? We can see your screen, Ma, but not your slide. Okay, the slide is not coming up. Yeah. I I think it's still loading. Okay, it's loading. Okay, I think it's still loading too. All right. Um, that won't deter us, I'll continue. So the word we're looking at here now, we're looking at the, the keywords we're looking at here, are engage, the word engage, the word scaffold, and the word independent. Now, if we come to mind, we'll ask ourselves, what does scaffold, the word scaffold, what, what does it have to do with education? You know, why do we, why do we, what's the relevance of scaffold and education? What do they have in common? I don't know how many of us have heard of the word scaffold before. You can put it in the comment box. How many of us have heard about the word um, scaffold? Have you come across the word scaffold before? What does it mean to you? You can put it in the chat box. Okay, I'm trying to look at the chat box to see our response. Okay, can we see the screen now? I think it's come up now, I don't know. Can we see the screen now? Hello, Mark, just hold on. Let me sh stop sharing so that I'll share for, uh, for you from okay, here. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Avigra. Okay, I can see, I'm looking at the chat box. I can see words like uh, ladder. It's a ladder, yes, it's a ladder. It's a four-legged ladder. All right, that's great. Okay, thank you very much. So you can see the, uh, the first slide now. Let's go to the slide now. Engaging scaffolds that deepen independent learning in children. Now, when you look at the picture, the image in the, in the first, in the, in the slide one, what do you say? Who, who are the people that you see? There are two people there. There are two people there and they are doing something. What are they doing? Who do you see? Who do you see there? I can see uh, a teacher, someone representing an adult, and I can see a child. Now, what are they doing? There is a foundation. If you look at it very well, there's a foundation. And you can see uh, the teacher, like she's supporting, something like she's supporting. And the child is the one putting each blocks upon one another, she's put, the child is putting the block, the, sorry, the, yes, the, the child is putting the block one after the other, like building a tower. All right, can we go to slide two, a big great place. Let's go to slide two. All right, now let's go to, let's see the highest breaker. This is what a scaffold looks like. How many of us have come across, have you come across this structure before? Have you seen this at the construction site? What comes to mind when you see something like this? What comes to your mind? Does it arouse your curiosity? Does it, does it arouse your curiosity? When you said this, does it arouse your The first time I saw this, I wondered in my mind that why this is a building? Why do we have all these things around the building? Of what use is this for the building? And at the end of the day, as I grew older, I got to understand that this is a support for the building. To be able to hold the building together until the building is finished. By the time the, building, the construction of building is finished, they can now remove it. And at the end of the day, we see a building that we want, that we admire, a building that we love. Oh, this building is beautiful. But the building had a support before it can get there, be it a, be it a skyscraper, be it a tower, be it a four-story building, be it a six-story building. And the scaffold that's going to be put in place will depend on the type of structure that you are putting in place. 
All right, let's go to slide three. Let's go to the third slide. It'll be great. Please, thank you. Yeah, someone said to help work in progress. Thank you very much. That's a key word, to help work, work in progress. There's a work in progress. So the, the scaffold is there to help work in progress. That's beautiful. So we're going to be looking at what does the word scaffold in on a general term? What does it mean? What, what is the meaning of scaffold in education? Why, why do we have scaffold in education? What is instructional scaffold? Okay, on a general term, we have scaffold in education. Now, what is instructional scaffolding? What's it all about? They were going to look at ways or strategies of scaffolding children's learning. How do we scaffold learning in children to make them to be independent learners? Then we'll be running over the benefits what do we stand to gain when we scaffold learning in children? Thank you, please. Oh, we good. The, the next slide. Slide four, please. All right. Now here we are. Here we are. What do we see? I can see some workmen working. Can you see some workmen at work? And they are leveraging on the scaffold, isn't it? That means the scaffold that is put in place wouldn't be just any other scaffold. Does, does that, do we imagine that in our minds too? It's not just any house scaffold. While I was while I was preparing for this, I went around sites and I inquired. I inquired from the from the site managers and even from the workmen at the site. I was asking them quite a lot of questions, and they made me to know that scaffold comes in different shapes and sizes. You have wooden planks, you have metal poles. It depends on the on the structure you are putting in place. So, what is scaffold on a general term? It's a temporary structure that you put outside a building, it's made outside a building to support the building. You put it there to support the building and who we'll, we'll get to make use of this scaffold, the workmen, like we see in the, in the picture there, the workmen with the scaffold, they can carry materials from the base, the, the, the base of the building and move it up like that and work, they continue with their work. And like I said, the scaffold they will put in place depend on the kind of structure they are building. Just like in, in, uh, in education, what structure, at what level? You know, at every level, the, the, the type of scaffold you engage in, 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 uh, in children's learning will, will vary. It won't be what you've been engaging in the previous at the previous level. All right, so um, at the end of the day, by the time the building is, is the, it's finished, the construction is finished, what happened? They remove the scaffold. We've seen some 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 building. They use bamboos. I've seen some. They use bamboos. They remove it at the end of the day. Probably they, they sell it up or take it to another site for use if it's still usable. All right, let's go to the the, the next slide, please. Please help me with the next slide. So we need to establish that is a temporary structure that is made outside a building to give it support. Now let's come to scaffolding in education. What is scaffolding in education? What are we talking about? You are talking about the support that is given by a teacher to assist a child in achieving his or her learning goals. That's what scaffold in education is all about. The, 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 it, it enhances the child to be able to, 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 to work at the task given and to be able to achieve the learning goals at the, at the end of the day. That's what, that's what we are talking about. Now look at the image, look at that image. The first image, you have two images there. The first one, can you say that, that, tiny, that, tiny, um, that tiny person at the, at the, at the bottom, that, at the bottom of that tower. And they, do you see that other thing at right at the top of the tower? That's a child. Where is the child headed to? The child is headed to the top of that tower. And the child needs help. So scaffolding in education is the assistance that the teacher will give to the child to get to the top. Through, um, it comes in learning activities. And at the end of the day, the learning outcome, the accomplishment, which makes the learner or the student or the child independent is the scaffolding that is given. And can you see when scaffolding is engaged, can you see how confident that child could, could go from one level to another level to another level? And at the end of the day, the child gets, gets to the world to the peak. It assists, is an assistant, an assistant, a structural assistant or a structural guidance that is given by a teacher to the child to achieve the learning goals. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. The next slide. All right, instructional scaffolding. We are looked at scaffolding education in a, in a general term. Now the instru instructional scaffolding, what's, what's it all about? Is like we said in the previous one, the support, the support that a teacher gives. But now 
when we look at instructional scaffold, it's tailored. When you say something is tailored, you know, it's um it's 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 engaged with a child, with the level of the child, with the ability of the child. You know, no child, children move from known to unknown. That's that's basic in education. A child, no child is empty, like an honorable Dio Israel said that there are seats in the inside of every child. So you as a teacher, what are you supposed to do is to help the child develop the seeds so that the seeds can germinate, the seed can grow, and there's, a, there's gonna be a harvest. There's gonna be a harvest at the end of the day. So it's tailored to what? To the need of each child. You know, in our classrooms, we have different types of learners. So it's tailored to, to the length, to the um, need of each child at each level of learning. Just like we saw in the previous slide, there's a, there are levels from one level, from level one to level two. The scaffold, you're going to, the instructional scaffolding you're going to give to a child in nursery two and nursery one is not the same you're going to give to a child in primary one or primary two. So it, de it depends on the need of the child at that level. Then it is done. Why is it instructional? It is, it is, it is an instructional because you're going to model a task as a teacher. You're going to give verbal instruction or you provide assistance. If you look at the, the image that we have there, you can see it's in four stages. You can see the, the, the children at the top, at the very top, and they're super excited. That's what you see. Uh, the expression you see on the, on the faces of the children at the end of the day, when they're, they're able to uh, accomplish your task. It's Eureka. I finally got there. I finally made it. So at the bottom, the model is done by the teacher. It's like, I will do it. I am doing it. Then by the time the teacher engage, engages the scaffolding activities, it becomes mostly the teacher, a, a great percentage on the part of the teacher and some percentage on the, on the part of the child, which, is, which means we are doing it. Then at the, at the, at the, at the next stage, what happened? The task is done more by the student and, and the teacher does, does, what does the teacher do? The teacher will gradually withdraw the support, the scaffold, she, he or she gradually withdraws it and allow the children at, to do the task. And that becomes you do. What did I say? You have first, I do. The second, we do. And the third one, I do. That is the, the child or the student doing it. And at the end of the day, it becomes independent. The child can independently carry out the task on his or her own, just like in a Montessori setting. What do we do? The director or the directress introduces uh, whatever um, whatever uh, material that is to be learned, going through a period of lesson, and the, 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 and after that she withdraws. He or she withdraws and allow the child to carry out the task by himself or herself. All right, let's go to the next uh, slide. Let's go to the next one, please. Yes. So look, we have we have looked at. What scaffolding in education is we have looked at what instructional scaffolding is all about. Then now what makes the scaffold, what makes it effective? It is effective when the type, when it, it is effective, if, uh, sorry, scaffolding, what makes scaffolding effective? It depends on the task that you are, that you're selected. The task must not be too difficult and it must also not be too easy. Like a balanced task is very, very important. Then errors are anticipated. Of course, errors. We have it at the back of our mind that the children will make mistakes. That's why our instruction, the instructions we give, it must be instructions, the instructions must be, um, the children must understand the instructions we are given. You understand clarity, yes, that's what I want to use there, clarity. Then during the process, we are scaffolding the learning to one form of assistant, assistance on the other. Then uh, and the last one there is encouragement. You know, there's what we call emotional scaffolding too. A child can become can, can become frustrated along the line because he or she is not getting the sums right, because he or she is missing one thing or the other, and you can see frustration written all over the child. So you have to come in as a teacher and say, you are doing well, you can do better. All right, let's go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Yes. Now that brings us to the techniques of scaffolding in children's learning. What are the strategies? How do we go about it? What do we put in place to, 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 to engage scaffolding in children's learning? One, they have hints, hints. You can give them hints. You give them a task to accomplish and they are struggling with it. You can give them hints. Let me, yes, there's a, there's a question there. There's, there's a poll there. So let's go ahead and 
and answer those question is the tool that helps students engage in engage in words yes you can go ahead and it's one of the tools of scaffolding though i've not gotten there but it's a tool so we can go then scaffolding helps students make progress in understanding and skill uh, understanding and skill acquisition so we can go ahead and answer that all right so i was saying that here to give hints now i mean i'm an early childhood educator so we are doing plastic materials and paper materials. We have, a, we have a container that has plastic and paper material. And probably a child is finding it difficult. Where should this one go from, from picking pick a particular material? Where should this go? Should I put it in, in, the, in the plastic? Where do we have the bin for the plastic? Or the, the, the teacher can give a hint. Or the cup you have, what material is it made of? Then the next one is dig deep, deep into, into student knowledge base. I want to teach a topic on animals or types of animals. I won't just go, I won't just say, oh, these are the types of animals. Someone said the pole is too fast. <laughs> I won't just say these are the types of animals. I won't just go ahead and start talking about it. I will dig deep into students' knowledge base. Why? Because they have a prior understanding of animals. They have, they have a knowledge, they have knowledge, a knowledge about animals. I can just say, oh, do you have a pet in your house? Do you have any animal in your house that is a pet? Oh, someone say, oh, we have a dog. Oh, we have a cat. Oh, we have this. Okay, why is it living in your house? By so doing, you know? I'm digging deep in the student's knowledge base. Then another thing is you can provide additional resources to help the children. That's another technique or another strategy of scaffolding um, learning in children or scaffolding children's learning. You can provide additional materials. You find out that they're having difficulty, you can bring in additional materials, very good materials that we make use of in the early childhood class are worksheets. Apart from writing in uh, the children writing in their books, we introduce worksheets and we have lovely worksheets, colorful worksheets that the children they love and they are ready to work with to further enhance, for that, to further help them um, in achieving the learning goals. Then you encourage creativity. How do you encourage creativity? By allowing them to make discovery. That's the essence of learning. Let the children think out of the box to be creative, to be creative about what the task they want to accomplish, especially when they're in a team, in, they're collaborating. You see this person say, oh, why don't you do it like this? Why don't you do it like They come up, they, they might even do the, they might even go ahead and do it much more than what you expect. All right, so let's go to the next slide. The next slide, please. All right, then we have, you explain the task in different ways. Ex explaining the tax in different ways. That's a picture there, questioning as a tool. You can see the, the teacher at the center um, putting, putting up, uh, uh, asking questions, children raising their hand. Then explain the task in different ways. Why do you need to explain the tax in different ways? Because we have types, the types of learners you have in the classroom. We have the visual learners, we have the auditory, uh, auditory learners, we have the kinesthetic learners. So you're going to show them, you're going to tell them, you're going to let them try it too in different ways to us to accommodate the types of learners. And by so doing, the children will be able to understand the task they are to engage in. Then you encourage collaboration. Collaboration, when you put them in, in, in a group, a group of four, a group of five, you know, or, peer, or even a group of maybe two, maybe two. Uh, there's what we call peer collaboration. You have in a group, some students that know uh, they, they understand, they, they know their colors perfectly. They know what colors are. And you have some, you have some also that know what shapes are. So you can have shapes in different colors. You can have shapes in red, you can have shapes in blue. So, and they come together like that. They're going to help one another. You find them have, oh, that, that's a square. Oh, the color of the square is red. Then you also use um, questioning as a tool. You had a poll on that uh, in the previous slide. Higher order thinking question, not road, not memorization, not road learning, but for the children to be critical thinkers, ask them questions using questioning. You know, probably you, you read a story today and you begin to, let me take for example, the story of um, Little Red um, Riding Hole. Let me use um, the three little pigs. So quite as many of the early child educators are conversant with it, the story of um, the, the three little pigs. We know that the three the three pigs are siblings and they decide to build houses. They went their separate way to build houses. One used straw, one used um, sticks, and the other used um, block. 
You know, you can ask yourself, why do you think that other one use block? What do you think? Oh, and by you find out that children, they'll be thinking, coming out with answers on their own. And there, the, 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 the last one there says, engage in experiential learning experiential learning where the children have contact with the environment. At the beginning, I spoke about taking a topic on types of animals. They can visit a zoo. The children can visit the zoo. And in process, they can now see the lion and they, see, they hear the lion roar. Oh, no wonder the lion is a wild animal. It roars like this, it can't stay in the house. Especially those, those, those children in the, in, the, in the preschool. Oh, the lion can't stay in the house. It's, it, it, it's gonna scare everybody away. And it's big and you, you find out that they'll be able to connect. They'll be able to connect the dots, connect the dots. All right, let's go to the next slide, please. Thank you. All right. Um, now we now look at, um, we look at the benefits of scaffolding in children's learning. But before we look at the benefits of scaffold, scaffolding in children's learning, I remember because I jotted, um, I jotted um, what Honorable Dial is, well, some of the things he said, I was writing it down in my, in my notepad. And it's, you know, he spoke about his vice principal. You can see how much of a help the vice principal was to aim. And he said that was what, what set the tone for his achievement in life. So when we scaffold learning in children, there are lots of benefits, huge benefits. And the first one I have there is achievement of goal. Children or students or a child will be able to achieve his or her learning goals. The children, the, the student will be able to achieve his or her learning goals because by the time the children becomes independent, he will have accomplished the task and he'll be ready to move to the next level, the next level, the next task to be able to do that with all confidence. Why? Because he had received support from the teacher or from an adult or from the peer. If I'm to ask us here, at one point in time in our life, even as we are as teachers, are we not receiving support from one quarter or, or, the, or the other? During the lockdown, so many of us were, were engaging in trainings, no learning, paid trainings, even the free ones. What were they doing? Those trainings, what were they doing for us? They were, they were like support for us, help us to scaffold our, our, our learning, you know, to better our teaching, our teaching um, prowess, if I'm to put it like that, to, to, to enhance our teaching skills, to make us better teachers. So also the same thing for our children. Then for the children to be able to move, to make progressive movements. That is, you're moving them from the known level, they're going to what? The unknown level, the, the progressive. They are not where they were yesterday, they are moving, just like you and I, we are moving. That's why you're here, you, that's why we are all here today on this webinar, because we want to what? We want to move from one, at one level to the other. We want to, we want to be, by the time we are resuming school fully, we want to be better, well equipped and ready to do more. For our children, like we were, we were asked by, we were told by, uh, by Honorable Buddha in Israel that we should do what? We should do more as teachers. We are midwives of, uh, of destiny and we are to birth that greatness in our children. Then also, um, the benefit is that it, it promotes cognitive learning and active participation. We are raising critical thinkers, the forces of learning. Mr. Lamu mentioned it. Learners that are critical thinkers, learners that are problem solvers, when we help them, give them the necessary support, they will do better. They help students to be, become independent. That's our keyword, one of our keywords today, independent learner. Then the, the, they then the children become self-regulating learners. They own, they become um, uh, problem solvers, like I mentioned earlier. And also they own their they own their own learning. They own their learning, they own their learning, they are proud of it. You see the 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 uh, like the Lion King, yes, the Honorable Dio is been mentioned. You see that that satisfaction, the expression of satisfaction on their on their on their faces by the time they accomplish the task. You no, know, yes, I'm able to do it. Yes, I can do it. Then how about the struggling ones or the weak students? With scaffolding, you're able what, to help them also to make that progressive movement and they become better, maybe by pairing them with one of their pairs that is quite good and giving the necessary support. I remember some um, some few years ago, I come in corner with a child. 
with a child that um, couldn't, couldn't read, he couldn't read. The child was about um, seven years old. The child couldn't read and the parent was overly concerned. She was overly concerned, oh, what do we do? And you know, I made some inquiries, I made some findings and I found out that where the child was coming from, the school the child was coming from, they didn't give that support, that help. They just felt that the, the teacher, okay, let me put it that way. The teacher felt, oh, you're not catching up. You're not doing, okay, relegate that child to the background. Just like for as men that went to school, the time I went to school, teacher, the, teacher, the, the, the teacher that taught me way back then, just very few of them, they don't, they don't care. When you get it, if you get it or not, they don't care. They've taught you, they've taught you, and they are leaving the class. And God help you, you miss anything. You get um, the light. Of, of strokes of the cane. So I had to do this and, and I found out that this boy needed emotional scaffolding. He needed his, his self-esteem as been as been as been matired. If I'm permitted to use that word matired, he doesn't have any. And I can't give him a confidence. I tell him, I believe in you, you can do it. And we started gradually from the very bottom the sounds and everything. And each time the boys, each time we, 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 are, we, are, we are in a session, the boy is smiling. She would tell, tell me, I do, you believe? I said, yes, I believe it. You can do it. I said, let's look at it. I went on and on and on like that. And today the boy is better. The boy is better. Not saying, uh, like our teachers way back there, say, oh, no, do, you know, that kind of a thing. Not, not nice at all, you know. All right, let's go to the, the next slide, please, Obigwe. The next slide. Yes, my final slide. In a summary, scaffolding is the assistance you give to a child to be able to accomplish what? To accomplish his or her learning goals, you know? And at the end of the day, the child becomes what? An independent learner. The child is owning is our own learning learning pattern, you know. The child has been able to accomplish uh, the task at the end of the day, the child is happy. And who is a scaffolder? The teacher is a scaffolder. They are meant to give the support to the child. And once the child can find his or her feet, just like that building, by the time the building is completed, what do we do? We remove the scaffold. So the teacher, what do, do, will the teacher, what will the teacher do at the end of the day? The, the teacher gradually fade away from the state and let the child stand on his or her feet, you know, and running along and doing great things. All right, that brings us to the end of this topic. Thank you very much. So I wanted to also thank Bumi Adidaya Foundation for the opportunity given on to me to facilitate on this topic. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Over to you, Obigwe. Wow, 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 what a session, Mrs. Adewako, thank you very much. Please, can we appreciate Mrs. Adewako, please, for a, for a great presentation. Can, can, we, can we appreciate Mrs. Adewako, please? Let's drop our comments on the comment section. Let's drop our reactions, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for staying with us. Um, yeah, we've learned so much today. Also, drop your questions. Don't forget to drop your questions on the comment section. We'll take them shortly after this, um, uh, shortly. So we've learned so much today from, right from the keynote speaker to our main facilitators for the day, Mr. Aki and Labu, Ms. Mrs. Adewaku. And they've taught us so many things today. The keynote speaker told us, he said something and he got me laughing when he said we shouldn't, as educators, we should be uh, Obama to our learners and not o Osama. We all know Osama be landing. So that's, that's, that's a, a good takeaway from this session. Try to, to encourage your pupils. Don't, don't write them off as educators. Mr. Akira Alamu also taught, uh, talked about reflection. Why we need to reflect, why we need to self-evaluate us. So why we need to do self-evaluation. Somebody once said, uh, there's, there's a, a Chinese man, I, I don't want to pronounce the name so I don't bite my tongue. He said, um, we, we, we understand life, we can only understand life backward. However, we need to live life forward. 
So we don't, we don't, we 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 reflect by going, but we we evaluate ourselves by thinking about the things we've done before and trying to say, okay, let's make it better the next time. So that is all about reflection. So I'll encourage us to keep reflecting and keep building our skills and capacities as teachers. Then also, Mr. Dewaku also talked about scaffolding. Wow how you need to support your, your, your learners. Don't write them off, don't tell them, oh no, don't get out of this class. Don't leave them, be those ones that, that, that are slow, don't leave them behind. Like um, when you're, I think uh, week five also, we, we had talked about, um, uh, they talked about uh, learning styles. Try to identify the learning styles of your pupils and create opportunities for each and every one of your learners to learn in your classroom. So I'll, I'll be taking the, the questions now. Before I'll go through the comment session, by the way, I have one question for Mr. Alamu. I saw one question for you. Mr. Alamu, are you here, please? So the question is, so how do we impact reflection in students? Okay, thank you. The same way uh, we adults should calm down and do more reflection. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I think um, the best way to, um, because if you do it right from the formative years and they have that skill, then it won't be too much of a trouble for them when they are of age. Uh, yes, when I was teaching um, international baccalaureate and I think anybody that has taught little children um, in a grade school, will remember how they kept their diaries. Not diaries that we'll be talking about the homework given by the teachers this time around, but diaries where the child will reflect and write how a particular day was spent. There are diaries for daily reflections, diaries for weekly These children, they will document friendly from a great way to bring up children to make sure that whatever you do, you um can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can, sir. Okay, I think uh, the, the network was bad. So whatever you do, you don't just uh, um do things um, without thinking deeply about your processes. And people that are working on uh, positive um, discipline, uh, behavior management, as my colleague did last week, they use the skill of reflection a lot instead of beating the child. When you do something that is not acceptable, they call you, they engage you. Why did you do this? Who do you think would be pleased by doing this kind of thing. So I think those are the very um, little ways that we can use to build reflection skills in uh, the children. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I also, okay, this question is for okay. Mrs. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Before you move on, somebody sent me a, a question uh, okay. into my personal box. The person sent in from Ghana. Okay. And Question, where is the place of personal development as a catalyst to gain to gaining quality reflection capacity? And for me, I think I will just uh, turn the question around by saying that quality reflection is the catalyst for personal development. And I remember around uh, 2013, we went to do a job in um, Ocean State in Oshoko in a private school. And I went with a colleague of mine, very vast in uh, soft skills, because we had to work with the teachers on um, uh, soft skills like communication and uh, team building. And after we finished, one of the teachers was very curious, asked the, my colleague what his background was. And the, the teachers in that school were very, very um, uh, surprised that my friend didn't have a former training, I mean, going to school to do anything in education. But because he has developed himself, he spoke like an expert who knew what he was doing. That's what quality reflection can do for you. It's going to help you to self-develop and you are going to be on top of your game. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lamu, for that um, response. So right now, I also have one more question. Since there are no, no other question on the comment session, I have one more question for, for Mrs. Adewako. This is for you. The person says, instructional, are instructional materials the same as instructional scaffolding? All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Bide, for the question. Um, instructional materials, there are the variety of tools that you engage, uh, your instructional scaffolding um, pattern. That is, instructional scaffolding is the assistance you want to give to the child. Now, given the child the assistance, what are you going to do? You're going to make use of instructional materials. And instructional materials can be, um, can be materials in print, like the textbooks, you know, um, for, um, um, textbooks can be in um, audio, maybe they listen to a podcast or something, can be visuals, maybe pictures, photographs, can even be um, models, something they can handle, they can work with, they can try their hands with. So that's different. And Levagotsky said something. He said, what a child can do today with assistance, she will be able to do by herself tomorrow. So that is it. That's the answer to, to the question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Since there are no more questions, we'll be well almost running up. We we'll promise to, to, to close to stay to stick to time today. We'll be closing by five on the dots. So since there are no more questions, I'll also why we have asked. Thank you, John, for sharing the screen. So we are coming to an end of this. BAF webinar series and next week Thursday will be the last session we'll be having two wonderful facilitators in in the house so the, the, the participation is still open to everybody you can invite your colleague your your friends to be part of the session it's never too late to join in so while we are just um trying to round up right now I want to quickly post the feedback link on the comment section. We need your feedback. We want to do better, even if we are ending this, the webinar series in the next one week. We need your feedback on every session to help us do better next time we organize something like this. So I have the, the feedback form. Kindly click on the link that's posted on the comment section and give us your feedback. Tell us how we can improve on our presentation to you. So. With no more, okay. I don't know if we have. Sorry, please, uh, Mr. John. Can you help me share the link of our WhatsApp group so that for those joining us for the first time, they can join our WhatsApp group. We have a battery WhatsApp group for uh, participants, so you can join in to get more information from the groups. So, with no much. Um, no other activity. I would like to bring the session to a close. I don't know uh, if Mr. Okay, I would like to bring the session to a close. So I would uh, like to say thank you to everyone for being part of the session, for sticking with us. Thank you to our great facilitators. Don't forget next week is the last day of the BAF webinar series. Do have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you very much. Because we today.
Hey, Jesus, my dear. Ah, thank you very much for the program. We appreciate 